Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I recently came across a step-by-step -step process on how to do a year-end review and I thought it was so good that I had to share it with you guys. And this is something that I strongly believe has the potential to change your life if you implement it. And that's my promise to you that if you listen to this video and you apply the lessons and insights from it, in a few years you will be able to say that this is the most effective activity in your personal development and success. It's so easy to start the year right, but it's also just as easy to get off track. And the lessons in this video will help you get right back on track when that happens. So let's get right into the video. The first step in the process is create time to reflect. You have to make time to reflect. Many people don't know this and many people don't value reflection, but it's very important to create time to reflect. Someone said reflection turns experience into insight and it is that insight that gives you an edge in your decision making process. So find a quiet place in your house, find a quiet place in your local coffee shop and go there and spend some time reflecting. The problem is that if you don't ever reflect on the activities of the year, you will not know what you are missing. And when you start, you will now realize that, oh, that's what actually you've been missing. So this is very important. And once you start, you actually would never stop. And here are a few reflective questions that I think can guide you and help you in your um, re reflection process. What do I feel? That's very important to ask yourself. What do I feel about this past year? The events of the year, do I feel anxiety? Do I feel fear? Do I feel gratitude about the events of the past year? That's a good reflection question to ask. You can also ask, what do I know? What do I know? Was I laid off last year? Did I experience some grief last year? What do I know? What are the facts before me? You can also ask the question, what do I think about the events of the past year? What is possible? What are the possibilities? Even if I was laid off last year, what is possible given the situation I find myself? Can I use that as a springboard to entrepreneurship? Can I use that as a springboard to greater things in my life? So these, these are some reflective questions that can help you as you begin to think about the events of the past year. So it's important to take time to think because your reflection time is, is the differentiator between those who get results and those who don't. Because someone said sustained thinking beats smart thinking every day. Sustained thinking beats smart thinking every day. So it's important to take time to reflect. The second step in this process is you prepare your material. You have to prepare your material. As you get, I mean, I mean what are you going to review if there's no material to review? You need something to look back on. And if, if this is the first time you're doing this process, it's, it might be a disaster because if, if you don't have any material to review, this, this might actually be a disaster. If you've not been marking your days and, and marking your, your time and preparing your material, you wouldn't know what to reflect on. You can only reflect on what you remember and you can only remember what you have put down. So it's important that you prepare your material. So the question is, how do I prepare my material? This is how you prepare your material. You take five minutes, at the end of every day and you put something down that reflects the overall the overarching feeling of the day just a few notes a few notes about how you are feeling about that day and it shouldn't be more than a paragraph no one, no one is asking you to have some detailed description of every event of the day it's just a brief summation of your day in one sentence max two sentences so i personally use the five-year um, journal and the good thing about this journal is that it only gives you so much space for writing things down so you don't have a lot of space to write stuff down and that's that's so, so that constraint actually helps you um, not to be overwhelmed with oh i have to fill out this space it's just a little five lines that you really have to fill out this process of preparing your material also allows you to remember the victories and the failures of the year for example in this book i've i've used for a couple of years now Although you can see there are a lot of open spaces in the book because of course there are days that I, that I miss and I forget to write down reflections from that day. So what I do is I write down how I'm feeling at the end of that day or something interesting that happens or a useful quote that I read from um, a book that day. So I see a note here from many years ago where I was almost accused of stealing $20. <laughs> That's a long story actually. Uh, but just seeing that note, for example, makes me remember the events and the activities around that day and um, that the, the phase of life I was in that year, for example, and I can reflect on, okay, what was happening then? How far have I come? And things like that. So this is, this is a very useful way to, to prepare your material. I also see notes from 
October 2020, the Hensars protest in Nigeria and the days that followed and how I was feeling ar around that time. Um, there are notes here about the elections of 2020 and the events that followed and my feelings about those events. Yeah, there's an interesting note here too that says no matter how great the talent or effort, some things just take time. You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. <laughs> you can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. So I can sit on that and actually reflect on it when the time comes to reflect. So this is how you prepare your material. You keep it simple and you keep it small. Find a, a good place to, to keep a good journal. And the third step in the process is you review your first half. The best coaches that I know are able to make um, half-time adjustments. I, I remember a recent match where the Liverpool Football Club was 3-1 down at half-time. And when the second half began, the coach made some tactical changes, brought out some players, brought in two players and, and, and made some tactical changes. And before the end of the match, the, the, the team drew, drew the game and took it to penalties and Liverpool ended up winning that match. The best coaches understand how to make half-time adjustments. So that's why having prepared your material for the first half of the year, you need to now take time to review the first half of the year. This is where you write down the observations. You write down your observations from your, your reflections. Every little thing that comes to your mind, you just, you just write it down. Don't, don't throw anything away. This is just, you're just dumping stuff down. As it comes to your mind, they're just writing down and dumping stuff down. For example, as I review um, the activities from last year, I realized that I probably did not spend as much time as I wanted to, you know, studying my Bible. And that's, that's an observation that I could have. I could, I could, you could have an observation that, oh, you spent too much time traveling. You didn't spend as much time with your family. That could be a, an observation. You write everything, everything. And your observation could be that you don't even have anything to reflect on because you are not preparing your material. Your observation could be that you spend so much time on social media. I, I mean, whatever your observation is, you just write everything. Down. And then you begin to prioritize those observations. Um, you begin to look at, okay, you begin to strike things that are obvious out. That you can make immediate changes on and yet you begin to put a star around the ones that are critical and are crucial for the new year that you're preparing for so this is this is very important you review the first half and then you begin to make changes necessary to make the second half a better experience for you in achieving your goals and the fourth step is reflect on all of your findings you reflect on all your findings this is where you ask yourself questions like what should i do more this year or what should I do less of this year? So if your observation, for example, was I spent too much time on social media or I spent too much time in the airplane traveling, then maybe you align that with your values and then you begin to think, okay, maybe I need to spend less time on social media. I need to spend less time um, in the plane. So what should I do more of this year? What should I do less of? So the third question that I think is critical here or that we should ask is, who should I share these things with? Who should I share my observations with? This is really important. This is where you really become successful because there are people God has placed in your life. There are people God has placed on your path that will help you become successful, that will help you achieve your goals. If someone knows that you are trying to get to the next step in your career, for example, say if your boss knows or if your manager knows that you're trying to get to the next step in your career, maybe they can be a voice and pushing you forward and helping you achieve that goal. So there are people in your life, you just have to look that you can share your goals with, you can share your findings with, you can share your observations with, that would help you really move towards success. And again, you can ask, what do I feel? And what do I know? What do I feel? Reflecting on your findings, what do I feel about these observations? And what do I know? What do I feel? And what do I know? You have to deal with yesterday to better discover tomorrow. We have to deal with yesterday to better discover tomorrow. If you don't deal with yesterday, we don't make the most discoveries that would advance us into our tomorrow. John Maxwell said that you have to be able to touch the past before you can reach for the future. You have to be able to touch the past before you can reach for the future. This process of reflection on your findings and your observation of the past year is a way of keeping tabs with the last year so that you can stretch yourself into the future that God has for you. And finally, you plan and schedule. This is where you begin to put stuff on calendar. You begin to schedule your emails. You begin to um, schedule your meetings. You begin to schedule conversations and, and outreaches. You begin to put that vacation on the calendar. And you begin to ask yourself the question, 
who do I need to accomplish the things that I'm trying to accomplish? How much free time do I have at my disposal? And you have to be realistic here. Contrary to what some of us have been told, we cannot do everything. <laughs> we cannot do everything. We are limited. We have limited resources. We have limited energy and we have limited time. And so we have to be realistic about what we are trying to accomplish. For example, if you're in college, you're in a much different place than a working parent who has two children, you know. And if you have a newborn baby, for example, you probably are not going to be able to start a new business um, in this new year. So you have to be realistic and ask yourself the question, how much energy and how much time do I have at my disposal to accomplish the things that I want to accomplish? And you begin to schedule your time based on that. So to recap, the first step in the process is you create time to reflect and then you prepare your materials. This is where you write things down on a journal at the end of the day. And then you review your first half of the year. In June, you review the first half of the year. And then you reflect on all your findings. So reflection is really a key step in this process. It's really a key component of this process, taking time to reflect on your findings. And finally, you plan and you schedule. This is when you put things on the calendar and you schedule meetings and things like that. Let me pray for you. Father, I want to thank you for my brother and sister listening to me right now. Thank you because you have great things in store for them in this new year. Lord, you are the giver of meaningful visions. You are the giver of great dreams. And you are the one who gives us the grace to articulate the dreams that you have given us. Lord, I pray that you will birth in them a new vision for their lives in this new year. Birth in them, birth in their hearts and in their minds. Crystallize in their minds a new vision for their lives in this new year. And give them the grace, O oh God, to run with it. Father, let this year be the year that they experience you in an exceedingly and a, an abundant manner in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. As the brilliant um, James Clear said, he said in his book, Atomic Habits, we don't rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. This last practice, planning and scheduling, is your chance to develop a system around your life to accomplish the things you are trying to accomplish. So yes, reviewing the past year is very important and it's a very important first step, but we have to consciously develop a system around our lives that helps us accomplish the things we are trying to accomplish. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure to click on the notification bell as well. I want to give you a chance to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If you would like to do so, please say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died for me and that you raised him up from the dead on the third day. Please forgive my sins. I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.